Hi, my name is David Arblaster. I'm with Corrosion Service. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to uh, pin brazing, uh, specifically attaching a rail bond to a piece of rail using the BAC Easy Bond pin brazing system utilizing the, our new lithium iron phosphate batteries. So the first thing I want to talk a little bit about is actually what the, what the process is. In essence, what we are doing is we're utilizing a, a 36 volt or uh, three 12 volt batteries that's generating actually 38 to 40 uh, volts that uh, then creates 240 amps and heats this pin 650 degrees and attaches uh, this rail bond to a piece of rail. So the equipment that you need to do this is first off obviously your power pack this is a uh, the, the BAC Easy Bond uh, battery pack which consists of uh, three 12 volt batteries they're lithium iron phosphate they, uh, the advantage that this, bat this power pack brings to, the, sy to the, the system is anywhere between 100 and 120 shots per single charge it'll work in minus 30 degrees weather it's about half the weight of the traditional lead acid batteries and uh, it's fairly quick charge as well so it's a very versatile unit um, that's that uh, with the lithium iron phosphate batteries provides a constant power source which obviously has a, a lot of advantages compared to uh, traditional lead acid batteries. The second part of the kit consists of two nine meter uh, cables. Now these are designed to work with the unit. You have to use the cables with the three with the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Um, they each plug into both the gun and the ground and they are designed to give you nine meters worth of length uh, to make the unit a little more adaptable. You can work with the unit on the high rail and have the gun in the ground closer to the rail. Um, the next part of the component obviously is the gun. So this is the Easy Bond gun um, and we'll go into a little more detail shortly about how it actually works and, and, uh, and fire a shot. Um, here's your ground. It's a magnetic ground. Um, and we also do have available a clamp, a form of a clamp uh, as well. Um, then obviously you need your bullet or your uh, eight millimeter pin. Obviously these pins, the significant difference between this and other solutions out there is there is actually a fuse wire that's attached to, to the pin. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that shortly as well. Then there's your ceramics or your ferrules. Um, and last but not least, obviously, your rail bond that you want to attach. From an equipment perspective, additional equipment that you'll need, uh, obviously a grinder, okay, to, to grind um, your spot for your ground and the spot that you're going to attach your rail bond. And then when I do the shot, I've already pre-ground both the rail and the, uh, and the location. Uh, a hammer to knock off your excess when you're done. Uh, the other thing that you need from a PPE perspective is obviously glasses, uh, preferably tinted so that uh, because this does create an arc so you don't want to look directly at the arc or at least have proper safety wear or eyewear that you can look at or welders glasses that you can look at the actual arc. Um, I wear fire retardant um, uh, uh, safety wear as well just because of the industry that we work in in oil and gas as well as rail um, and then obviously safety shoes and a hard hat a um, couple little things I also keep in my kit a uh, voltmeter because I like to know what I'm dealing with as it relates to the battery pack or the power pack uh, the unit needs 38 volts or greater in order to generate enough amperage to burn through the fuse wire and do a proper shot if it's under 38 volts, it will not do that. So uh, before I go out each day, if I'm working, I like to just take a quick uh, meter of what the batteries in sync are. And uh, right now, for example, I metered this and it was at 39 and a half volts. So typically on a full charge, it's almost 40 volts or more. The only other thing I want to mention is obviously gloves. Um, you need gloves as well in order to ensure that you, you know, that your hands are safe. You are dealing with 
or you are heating a pin 650 degrees there will be molten material there so you want to make sure that they are leather gloves so that you're protected. Okay so in order to set, I'm going to set the equipment up now, load the gun and actually fire off a shot and attach a rail bond to the rail. So the first thing I need to do obviously is to turn on my power pack. Now in this instance there are three 12 volt batteries in here that are lithium iron phosphate. All I have to do is just press each of the, the little buttons on the battery. You can hear it click on. So you just press them and they automatically click on. If I have to turn them off, I just hold it for about three seconds and it will shut off and you'll hear it click. Now the nice thing about these batteries is you can't overcharge them. Um, the actual charger is uh, charges about two amps so it's a trickle charge so you can charge them overnight you won't damage them and when they're working once they reach a certain level they'll automatically shut off when they can't do any more shots um, so that you don't damage the batteries either now in this case I've turned them on there's a little blue light right here that also indicates that uh, there's enough power in order to do a shot so once those have been turned on I'll just shut shut the case now the next thing I have to do is attach my cables and remember earlier I indicated that you have to use your uh, 9 meter cables um, with, the with the three 12 volt lithium batteries. So the first thing I'm going to do is just plug in my gun, make sure it's tight, plug in my, um, uh, my ground as well. So now I've plugged that in, then at the other end and in this instance I'd already done this, you plug in, because the cables are identical, you plug in your gun and your ground. Make sure that you're plugging the gun into the gun and the ground into the ground and you're not mixing them up. Okay. A little tip that I've done um, or I recommend is put a little red piece of tape on, the, uh, on one set of cables at both ends so that that indicates that that's what you're going to plug your gun into. Now, so now I'm connected there. Um, the next thing I would then do is grind uh, a spot for both my ground and in this instance where I'm going to do my shot. Now I've already done this ahead of time. So in this instance we're putting the, uh, the ground on the top of the rail and, uh, we're, and then uh, we're going to just attach the end of the rail here, a rail bond. Now I can't stress the importance that you have to have a clean ground and you have to have a clean spot for your shot. Okay, the cleaner and the, uh, the, the, um, the ground is, the better chance for success uh, as it relates to this, uh, this solution. Okay, so we've already done that. The next thing that we then need to do is actually take one of our pins and load our gun. Now in this instance what I do is again, there's your, your bullet or your pin, eight millimeter pin, and there's a tail on it. So we take the tail and we just insert it into the pin holder. So we take tail first, push it in the little hole there, wait for it to just to catch, and take the heel of my hand and push it until it's all the way in. There we go there. Now, the easiest way for me to explain that is actually if we look at the pin, there's a little sort of line here which needs to be fully inserted into the pin holder. So here's a separate pin holder just so that you understand when it goes in, it goes all the way in up to that line. Okay, So that's what really in essence is what's happening here. Okay. Now, next thing that I'm going to do is then insert my ferrule. So in this case I just put my ferrule in twist it a little bit just to make sure it's tight and again the same thing the ferrule goes into the ferrule holder and it goes right up to the top of its collar. Now the, la the next thing I have to do then is I have to measure and make sure that I have the right length of burn. The length of burn is determined by a little white collar at the back of the gun where the ejection button is. So in this instance I use a rail bond, I put it onto a flat surface, I take my gun and I press down, okay, and you can hear the spring in the middle of the gun. 
So when it's pressed down and I look at the back by the ejection button, there's a white collar that should be flush uh, with the gun. Okay, if it's flush, then I know I'm set properly. I turn my ferro holder in order to adjust that. Now, on a brand new charge, what you'll find is the gun might be a little bit hot. So if the, if that white ring is high, it's a shorter shot. If it's low, it's a longer shot. So in some instances, I may ha want a slightly shorter shot we'll off a brand new charge for the first two or three shots that I'm doing. So we'll turn it an extra three quarters in order just to make sure it's perfect. Okay, in this instance, we're good to go. If I look at there, I can see that where my collar is, the gun is properly set. Okay, so I'll put my gun down. Next thing you know is I to make sure I have access to my eyewear and my gloves. I'll put my gloves on. Put my eyewear on. Now I will attach my ground to where I had cleaned the, uh, the rail. Give it a little shake, just a little you know, movement, just to make sure it's tight. Okay. I'm now gonna take my rail bond. Again, one last double check to make sure I'm properly set. Look at the top of the collar, wire the ejection button. I know I'm, I'm set properly. Okay, double check to make sure my connections are tight. So I know I'm all set. So the process that I do is I take the gun with two hands, I put my, okay, so exactly I press to depress the, the spring in the middle of the gun. I put my second hand on the top of the gun, I look away and I hit my trigger and I do my shot. Okay, so in this sense I'm gonna do that now. Okay, brace myself, hand on the top. Look away, one, two, three. Okay, wait, one, two, three. Pull back straight. Okay, now while that's cooling, what I'm gonna do is now take my hammer, knock off my ferrule. Okay, eject my fuse wire. Okay, there's my fuse wire, okay. Put that down, put the gun down, that's cooled enough. Now I'll take the extra of my hammer, knock off the excess, and I check my, it's not going anywhere. I've successfully attached the rail bond to the rail. Talk about today is just some best practices that uh, we've incorporated over time using this, this uh, solution. Uh, one thing to think about is um, if by chance when you do a shot, the shot goes a little a little long, okay? First off, when you're doing your shot, you're going to keep your hand on the trigger and keep the trigger pressed. If the shot runs a little long, don't release the trigger. Just pull back because when you pull back, in essence, what you're doing is, you, is, is the spring in the middle of the gun is releasing and that's breaking your contact. So that's the same as if you were burning through your fuse wire. Okay, so that's one best practice that I would recommend. The second best practice in very, very cold weather, if in minus 30 weather you're working with this, you're finding that the, the gun's struggling or the, or the actual um, bond is not staying attached to the rail, take the extensions off. There's enough resistance created from the, from the cold weather that you'll find that you probably in minus 30 weather, you will not need the extensions. Okay, um, another best practice, I already indicated this earlier, but I think it's, it's relevant. It's always nice to know what you're dealing with before you start working with your, your gun. So use a voltmeter and just very, very quickly um, measure or just grab, oh dear, there we go, a little stubborn. Just, you want to sort of get a feel for what you've got. So in this instance, 
you know, we're dealing with 39.6 volts. So again, the advantage these batteries have is that you should get between 100 and 120 shots on a charge. Speaking of charging, now, here's the other thing I want you aware of. The charger that comes with the unit, uh, it plugs in right here. Okay, the nice thing about this charger is it's a trickle charger. So you can plug it in at night and it will charge all night long and it will give you a nice full charge for the morning. You can get a top up in about two hours, but typically I find because it charges at two amps, ideally you want to leave it overnight and get it charged. But the joys of this lithium iron phosphate battery is until you've gone to your 100 to 120 shots, you don't need to baby the battery. You don't need to keep it on charge. You can leave it in the back of your truck, turn the batteries off. When you need to use them, turn them back on. And just, just to make sure that you've got lots of juice, you just use your voltmeter and just double check and make sure what you're, what you're metering at. You need to be above 38 volts. Okay, so those are some of the, sh the, the best practices that we've come across that we encourage uh, our customers to do. Um, other than that, I think you'll find it will be a, a fairly simple unit to use. Follow the procedures that we've outlined in this video. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact Corrosion Service and myself at Corrosion Service at any time. We're here to help. We're here to, we have full repair capabilities and we'll provide training whenever you require it. So the last thing I want to talk about a little bit now is just some basic repair to the unit. Now, these, uh, the Easy Bond uh, gun is uh, completely repairable in the field, and we can train your crew or your group in order to repair them in the field. Um, typically, you know, it's about a, a two-hour training session, and these are completely field uh, repairable. Having said that, there are some basic repairs that you should be aware of that you can do fairly simply and easy that I want to cover off now. Anything more complicated, frankly, we would recommend that you send it back to Corrosion Service and we can do that repair for you. Before I go through that, I want to talk a little bit about what some of these parts are. Um, obviously, within the gun, you've got your ferro holder, which is, there's your ferro holder. You have your pin holder, which is the unit piece underneath. You have your spark shield, which is what this is. Okay, um, inside the gun, um, if we open up the, uh, the lid to the handle, you have your, your trigger assembly. Part of this trigger assembly has the two, two uh, trigger contacts or two uh, bolts that when the uh, trigger is pressed, these come together and, and then you, you know, you're basically um, uh, are allowing for that current to go through and fire the gun. Now, the other part of this I want to talk about is also is the uh, in the middle of the gun. So this is the part that's in the middle of the gun that when you depress the gun you can hear the spring. Now inside there as part of your uh, eight millimeter pin is the fuse wire. If when this fuse wire when you insert it into the gun actually inserts into right here which is the contact nipple. Now this contact nipple if you don't eject your fuse wire after every shot, you risk fusing that fuse wire in the middle of the gun or melting it in the middle of the gun and then you won't be able to do any more shots. Which is why it's so critical that after every shot, you eject your fuse wire. Now, the simplest way to do that obviously before I load any gun, I always press my ejection button make sure there's no fuse wire in it. But if by chance you don't do that and you actually melt that fuse wire in the middle of the gun because you didn't eject it after your next shot, um, the repair is about five minutes. And so I quickly want to sort of talk a little bit about that. So this is a contact nipple. Okay, you buy them in packs of five from us and they're fairly simple to, uh, to, to repair. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unscrew my ferro holder. Then I'm going to take my Allen key and I'm going to insert it into a little hole here and then turn turn uh, the pin holder until it actually goes right in both and it allows me to then turn my pin holder and I unscrew my pin holder. 
Now when I unscrew my pin holder, okay, that gives me access to now my contact nipple. And again, the contact nipple is this piece. What's happening inside the gun is when you do a shot and you're finished, you press the ejection button and a little rod ejects the fuse wire. If you don't do that, which is why it's so important to do it, that you then risk fusing that wire in the middle. So I take my pin holder off and I take a special spanner designed to remove your contact nipple. I put it in the contact nipple and then I twist out, I pull out the contact nipple, screw in the new contact nipple, take my spanner, tighten it up, don't over tighten it, tighten it but don't, don't over tighten, and then I screw back in, my pin holder, take my Allen key, again, put it back in. And then tighten it. Oops. Until it's hand tight. And then I take my barrel holder, screw that back in. Until that's tight. And then the next thing I'm going to want to do is actually load a bullet into the gun. And then take a bond and measure it and to see whether it is properly adjusted here. And if it isn't, then what I will do is I'll turn my ferro holder until it is properly adjusted and the white collar is flat in the back of the gun. So I've just basically taken out the, uh, the fused contact nipple, put a new one in. The only other common repair that you'll probably do is there is a wrench that comes with the, uh, the kit that's there to work on your um, contacts. And these can be replaced uh, fairly easily. You just put, now it's tedious work because it's uh, not a lot of space in there, but you just work on your, take them out, replace them, put the new ones in. One is convex, one is concave. I would recommend from a general maintenance perspective is every now and then just take some um, emery paper and just clean them. That's the extent of it. Don't grind them, just clean them and then put your cover back on. Screw your cover back on with your Allen key and off you go. So those are two basic repairs, replacing your contact set inside the gun and replacing your contact nipple inside the middle of the gun. Um, anything beyond that, frankly, I would recommend you send to Corrosion Service. We have a full repair service that's more than capable of repairing the gun and overhauling the gun and getting it back to you within two days. That's our, our objective, our goal for you. Quick turnaround. So we have uh, full repair capabilities. Send us the gun, we can do all of this work or some basic work can be done in the field. So that's the basic um, um, premise behind some basic repairs. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at Corrosion Service or contact me directly. My name is David Arblaster. Um, we're more than able to help uh, and uh, assist you in any way that you have, whether it's training, whether it's repairs, um, or even if you need to acquire additional units. Thank you very much.